Bringing us in, jamming our seat. Okay. <laughs> yes, folks. I tell you, he's been running since he's a young boy, jumping over the, her, the furniture. His mother said, TJ, what you doing? Come over here, Timothy. Call him by his first name, folks. Right? <laughs> he went on as a junior 2017, finishing uh, fifth at the, at the World Championship 2018, 2019, finishing fifth again. But his favorite track in the world, I believe, is the Eugene, Oregon track where he placed third. He's getting his game ready for the 2022 season. And guess where the world championship is at? That's right, Eugene, his favorite track, folks. But we have the man himself. And once again, as I said, his mother called him Timothy, but we call him TJ Holmes, folks. All right. That's our special guest. Once again, I'm Robert Esme, a.k.a. the Speed Doctor, the Olympic gold medalist, with my American host, co-host, the handsome, the debonair. Give it away, TJ. <laughs> All right, D-Pain. What's up? What, what's up? What's up, y'all? It's D-Pain TV. David Payne, Clutch Payne here. Uh, here with another great athlete, TJ Holmes. And we're just here to see what's going on with him and see if he, he could tell us our story and give us a little feedback on all his his encouragement for track and field athletes. Yes. What's up, everybody? I'm TJ Holmes. Like they were telling you, well, they didn't say I was from St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, yes, I've been top five in the world in the 400 meter hurdles at the 2017 World Championships in London and the 2019 World Championships in Doha. I am also a model for Nike. I was the face of the sun glass line. It's called Nike vision so uh if you go on instagram and i was on the website i've also been on the website for uh the sportswear and i was a professional athlete for nike at the moment i'm working on signing my next contract but right now i'm currently not on contract with them but uh as guests later we can get into that um it, i've been professional with nike since 2017 so yeah it's been a minute that's right, um, folks. He's ready for business. He's open. <laughs> so you said. So you said you're from Saint Petersburg, Florida. Um, so so you stayed in Florida once you went um, to college. But tell us what actually got you into track and field as an adolescent, as a young kid. I did. I do know that when you started out, you ran a lot of events, and that you ended up choosing the 400 hurdles. But tell me a little bit about how you got into it overall. Okay, yes. Uh, my dad started me in track at four years old. I was adopted at four. So my adoptive dad, he signed me up for everything. He wanted me to be great in all sports. And that so happened. I played football, tennis, uh, ran track and field. I wrestled. And I just decided my senior year of high school to stick with track. But I also could have been in the NFL. All my friends are in the NFL, the Griffin Twins. Uh, Rodney Adams, Savion, the list goes on and on. So besides that, uh, when I was four, I ran for a track team, Lightning Boat Track Club. Uh, it's in St. Petersburg, Florida. Trayvon Bromel, who is professional for New Balance, he's also on that same track team. Well, when we were young, uh, he stayed in the house behind me and he would come over and play. That's how we became really close. And we... Went to college together, Baylor University. I went there with him my freshman year. We went as a package deal. And then I decided I wanted to transfer and go back home. So I transferred to the University of Florida. Being at the University of Florida my sophomore year wasn't going too well because I tore my hamstring and I basically couldn't run for six months. And I had to swim in a pool, um, run on Alter G. Um, yeah, it was bad. But then so, I ran the so last. Yeah, yes. sorry, I, I I didn't mean to interrupt. So so yeah, I was um I was I was definitely reading some background on you, and uh, you started talking about how you tore your hamstring, and uh you talked about a procedure that I also I, that I actually got when I used to run uh, the PRP, where um, you had the procedure basically done, and then you have to sit out for a little while and wait for it to heal in order for you to get back in and get back into the groove and stuff. So tell me what your uh, like get back into like your therapy and all of that because. Uh, people don't know it's hard to like get ready for a competition and all you're doing is swimming in a pool but if you know what you're doing and you're doing the right workouts you know that can help you you know get your um 
your healing process back down, you can still get that 360 degree training. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, the PRP did not work too great for me because it took a little bit too long for me to heal. And I, my coach kind of like would rush me back. So I couldn't properly heal in time. It was something fresh for him. I guess he still needed to learn about my body. And mm -hmm. that we can continue to make progression and get better. So basically, I then came back the last three meets of that season and I made the SEC final uh, score one point. But hey, you haven't been running for six months. My hamstring definitely was still hurting. Uh, yeah, I missed yeah. that spot that year. It was bad and I was upset because the previous year I went to nationals and I was the only freshman in the final and I got fourth. So I was expecting to continue to make progression, which I eventually did my junior year when I got second at nationals to my teammate, Eric Futch. But, and we won the national championship. So that was another great thing on top of that. But I also did get injured that year. So I was injured for seven years at the University of Florida. So I decided to then stop training at the facility and just coach myself because I've always been a coach since high school. I taught myself how to hurdle in high school from watching YouTube videos. And in high school, my dad used to be upset because instead of like training, I would be helping the other kids learn how to do hurdles also. So I've been doing that. And now I'm the head coach at PK Young, which is a school connected with the University of Florida. So I work nice. for you. So soon... I will have a lot of professional athletes. They're young, but they run like grown men and women. I guess it's the IMG of Gainesville as far as track. <laughs> right. Nice. That's nice. That's nice. You know, I know a lot of the fans, when you said you, you, you grew up uh, with Trevon, the question they want to know is, did you ever beat him once in anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, me and Trevon used to run with each other a lot in practice because I was better at the endurance events and he was quicker, but I wasn't too far behind. I just didn't have the proper mechanics at the time because I also ran the 800. So, you know, 800 runners usually run with tight arms and they kind of cross the body a little bit, but eventually I taught myself how to continue to push my arms all the way back past my glutes. So that way I can keep my stride open all the way and not waste any motion. So it allows me to be more powerful. So I think, well, I don't think, I know, I will go back to doing more sprinting events because I was a sprinter before I was a hurdler. I didn't start hurdles until my sophomore year of high school. I used to run the 4x1, 100, 200, 4x4. Four four. And then my dad put me in the 800 to have me get stronger. But my mechanics are definitely much better, and I know for a fact I could run fast in the sprint event. Coach Holloway, one day while we were training, I was coming out of the blocks, and I was running around the turn, and I looked pretty good because he came back and said, don't ask me about running the 200. You're not running the 200. <laughs> right, right. How, how amazing is that to be able to train with such high-level <laughs> athletes such as Holiday and those guys? To have yeah. training partners like that. They're great training at the University of Florida. We had a lot of great athletes. Um, I wish most of them would have stuck around and continued to push and train, even though they also dealt with injuries, but they could have still fought back and came back. And But, I mean, it takes some people a while, or they have to be with the right people 24-7 so they don't completely give up. Most of them could make a comeback, but everyone was hard – uh, strong-minded and then eventually they just kind of died off some of them had kids as well <clears throat> but there's a lot of olympians that have had kids and then they come back and still get more medals so hey gators come back out <laughs> yes i do love them yeah gators. exactly uh, i put yeah, exactly. some barbecue and some hot sauce when i'm when, <laughs> <laughs> when you go ahead dp hit him with it hit him with it yeah so so i've actually watched you a lot um run in, in several races so uh tell me a little bit about how it felt to run at uh london give me give me your impression and, and how it felt 
Yes, I definitely enjoyed London. Um, ever since I was a kid, I would always, of course, not mock the accent, but mock the accent. <laughs> I guess I don't have to say mock the accent now because I am actually British and I talk just like them. But it's a nice city. The stadium was amazing. And basically, it looked like a party on the inside. It was my yeah. first experience coming from a college state, collegiate stadium and then going into an Olympic stadium. It was very crazy because I'm like, this is like 10 times bigger. Uh, a lot of seats, a lot of people, they look like ants. But yeah. I was nervous because I only need to focus on my lane and I know my race there pattern. You go. Every single season, I've always perfected the hurdle. So basically, I get further and further away on if I could do the 13-step pattern. So I had never made the 13-step pattern around the whole entire track yeah. into yeah. the Olympic finals this season. But then I got injured in the semifinals because I got too close when I did a cut step and I felt my hamstring tweak a little bit behind my knee. And yeah. I knew I wasn't going to be able to speed up and catch them because it's semifinals. Everyone's trying to make this final. So you got to be able to actually sprint. Right. So fifth hurdle, I felt it go out and then I just cruised it in and did what I could. But I've always been able to push to the line, even if I was hurt. When we ran the second fastest time in collegiate history at the four, in the four by four racing against Fred Curley and Malik Curley, uh, those guys, um, I was last leg and I had a lot left in the tank, but the last 50 meters, my hamstring, the same spot went out. And I know it was a, just probably a lot on my body, just training. So my legs kind of always would feel a little dead, but I would still push through it. But yes, we figured it out because instead of a PRP injection, I got an ozone injection because my friend who was on the team as well, Ryan McKinney, who is big in politics and her sister is on the news and she does things like that. Basically, she in high school had shin problems and she got ozone injection and it helped her. So she told me about it finally once she saw what kept happening to me. I went to the doctor in Bradenton and basically it was the best thing ever. It's completely legal. Uh, basically, ozone, you know the smell when it rains, that's ozone. They have a machine they connect to oxygen tank. It splits the molecule O2 and O3, and they put the ozone directly on the spot, your muscle, where it's injured. Uh, people who had torn ACLs, meniscus, um, elbows, and all that stuff, they do it as well. Your back, I've done it in my foot, my knee, my hamstring. My grandma had one in her lower back, and she used to not be able to tow the glass of water to her room and she's on the video on youtube bending down touching her toes so it's definitely a great great way to heal and it's natural but because it's just gonna make it blows up the muscle like a balloon and it allows a lot of blood to flow in there from your body because it's an empty space because it just blowed up empty so you gotta fill it up with the blood but basically that is how I was able to manage a lot of things in college and post-collegiate meets because I also, I kind of was sick of always getting hurt because I knew I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was eating healthy. Things were changing, but I know I'm in a better space now and I'm actually happy. I'm working with my kids. They are very uh, mature and elite. I train them like they're professional athletes. Some of them have been working with me during the summertime, so they know exactly how to do things because they were also running USA Juniors and youth while I was training for Olympic trials. Um, yes. How do you? At, how do you? How, how do you um, fit modeling and photography? And, you know, all these other things into your busy lifestyle, uh, would you say it's hard or would you say it's mandatory to have a couple of things that you do, ex you know, on your own time? Well, I actually think it's a good thing that I have been very busy because uh, when I was in college, I would always go went to class at like 830. And then from class, you go to practice 
with 1.30 and then you go to weights at 3.30 and then after weights you have to go to tutoring and then after tutoring I go get food and it's probably what almost 10 o'clock so that schedule is the schedule I had in college now as a professional athlete we have a lot of spare time to do a lot of other things you all you have to do is go to practice and then also go train oh no you go to practice and then what else do you have to do <laughs> now some people who are not being paid by sponsors have to get a job so that take up <laughs> yes that will take up time uh but after the job i don't know how many hours because i i it was hard for me to look for a job and actually hard to even be accepted to get a job because I have no worker's experience being a collegiate. I mean, only coming from being a professional athlete. What job have I had? <laughs> so, right, right, I mean, right. the resume, like going to college and all the other things you've done from your, I guess, athletic abilities could say something. But I also have been doing photography for a little bit over a year. Uh, I only got a camera because I wanted to take more photos of myself to make my uh, feed a bit more professional. But then I was asked to take pictures of my friends and I have been taking pictures of people on phones for a while. Uh, but Karan Clement, he was helping me when I came to Florida in 2015, 14. He took photos of me and he had a camera. So from then he would also like, if he wanted photos of himself, he would tell me to meet him somewhere and he would say here, here's the camera, press this button. So I just pressed the button. But then 2020, when we had no track season, that was my last year on contract with Nike. So I thought. So then, because they said they were going to get rid of a few people, and I had just got fifth at World Championships. Of course, I wanted to get a medal. But prior to going out to get that medal, I got injured in backstage, but no one knew because... I still went out like, like I'm not going to just give up. This is the final. Like we're going to give all we got. Um, so that's why when we first started the race, I didn't get out as fast as I usually do. I kind of just built because I wasn't sure if my hamstring would go out or not. <laughs> go. But it managed and we still were able to run a PR and we got to the finish line. But I did cancel the rest of my season and I did not go to the world continent meet. They had like a, it was a different USA team. It was a yeah. whole bunch of other countries on the team with the USA team. It was weird, but they got a trophy and they got paid for winning. I would have wanted to go there, but things happen. Who cares? We move forward. We got stronger. Well, now, well, let me just tell you, let me just tell you that. <clears throat> You can be an unattached athlete and still do well and make a lot of money. They, I, I, I did it myself. So it also is inspiration for you to keep your head down, keep grinding. When you finally look up, you're well past them paying you. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't know that um, you may not have a sponsor, but you're running all to these meets. You're flying all over the world and it seems nice, but you're still trying to be on the line and focus on what you're doing at hand, these races here and there, your competition, and in the background, at the same time, still trying to get an endorsement. So there are a lot of things that go into these races, but I will say that uh, majority of people who became the greatest ran without contracts, and people kicked themselves in the ass when they realized that they passed them up. So just continue to keep doing what you're doing, for sure. Yeah, no, I'm going to continue to keep pushing, but it just is bad when the company that you started with and you've done so much for how things take a turn because, well, firstly, my foot was um, messed up badly in 2019. My bone under the spike. Um, I would keep mentioning it to coach Holloway and it got worse over time because we kept smashing it over the hurdle. That's my trail leg. So I'm going to really push down extremely hard over the top. So, from there, um, I needed some type of pad. I tried, like, at the World Championships, they put these little donut uh, foam pads 
under my spike to try to make cushion because it was so bad, but like it was cracked or something. I knew something was wrong, but I just kept running each and every day. And I kept saying it, it was something wrong, but I would just put the donut pads under there. So pressure point. Yeah. Right under the, like, if this was my, if that was my, it it was my sesamoid bone. Okay. So I, so Nike had released these spikes. They were um, Zoom victory spikes and they were black and green and they had a foam uh, pad in there. So I tried the spikes out because we were only training in the grass. So when I was training in the grass, I was sprinting extremely fast. I looked at the sprinter. My knees were coming up. My mechanics had changed. This was in 2020. So then we finally went to go train on a track. We were being safe because of COVID. So then we went to a track. We went to the track. The shoes that I have been using, I use on the track and the bubble flattened. I guess I was pushing down so hard, putting a lot of force. So I sent, since I have been um, helping Nike create shoes in the past and all the designs that I had helped them with, the shoes had released and for sale to the market. So basically the um, green and black shoe, it popped and I send the picture to the Nike uh, shoe rep and I let him see, I'm like, I need a new spike. I like the spike, but I don't think it's all the way done. Um, it needs a bit more cushion around the top of it because it's a little flimsy. The material needs to be a bit thicker. And I said the plate underneath the bottom needs to be all the way to the hill because it is too soft. It didn't feel right. It felt like a trainer, like a waffle or something because the bottom of it didn't have a plate. So I was like, that plate needs to be a lot harder, firmer. So every week they would send a new shoe. And basically this is my shoe I train in. And I created this spike because it was helping fix my foot. And then they started letting other athletes try out the final prototype that I created. And now that's why they have the Zoom Max Fly. But oh. I call <laughs> Fly Pierre's because Fly Precision Airs. That's what I wanted it to be called. Hey, Nike, thank you Follow for the, the experience. Homes, Follow the homes, baby. Now, That's here's awesome. a critique. That's this awesome. is the critique question, the critique question of the day. I love help people. Um, I do workshops all over the world, and I have an opportunity to be in comfort of my own home and help people especially in the athletes who want to make it to the next level. From what I've heard so far, you're very passionate of helping others. Where did that passion come from and why did you want to help others? Well, I've kind of always been that way because of how I was raised. My parents always made sure I wasn't selfish. Like with all my friends, they would come around, they would take things from me to give to my friends just so I can know it's okay to share. And also from being connected closely to God, I know the right thing to do is be generous and want the best for everyone and help each other out instead of fighting and starting unnecessary problems. So that is why I'm the way I am now. I am humble. I am ready to start winning again. Um, I know for a fact that that is going to happen. I am healthy. I haven't been injured all fall. Usually I would have some type of injury by now. Um, So I'm ready to get back on the track. There will be a lot of everything. I plan to uh, get PRs in all the events that I have done since I was a child. Before I retire, I'm going to have to make sure that happens. So we're going to run everything. We're not limiting. Let's go. (laughs) So. <laughs> Definitely, if you need a, a critique by uh, D. Payne as a hurdle specialist, I promise he will give you a free one uh, and help break okay. down the mechanics for you. All right. Of Any other course. questions for him, uh, D. P. Um, so I just, you know, like, how does it feel to be, you know, up there in the upper echelon of hurdlers? I mean, I, I know great hurdlers. I used to train with him. I trained with Michael Tinsley and. 
uh, James Carter and I know Angelo Taylor, Felix Sanchez, like Batman. These are all great hurdlers. So how does it be? How does it feel to be ranked up there? You know, with these fast people. I mean, you are a great hurdler. So how does that feel? Uh, yes. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, it feels great. I definitely feel like I have accomplished something, but it's not the place that I want to be. I would want to be number one. I know that's going to come someday, so I'm not going to be selfish. So I'm always grateful, and I always tell God I'm doing this for him. So whatever place I get, that is fine. Um, basically, when I first signed with Nike, I wasn't um, getting paid. I didn't keep my contract until September. Sometimes it takes them quite a little minute to actually get things in order so you can receive your contract money. But me coming from college, the amount that I received, that's like, oh, wow. Like, okay, that's a good amount because running now I can get bonus money when I go to the Diamond Leagues and then I start running certain times, getting certain places, which happened. So I was able to make about six figures. The first year I was on the circuit in 2018. And then once again in 2019, I did well again. So I was up there once more. Now, 2020, the contract did not go up too much. And all the money that I received in the past, the expenses were, you know, much, much. Money going out, so, taxes, money. taxes, baby. Uh, taxes, going out, baby. not enough coming in. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> athletics. Oh, so the brand, 4HGU, For His Glory Utility, the clothing brand I started. It has uh, streetwear, swimwear, fitness, yoga, winterwear. Uh, we're getting adornments. And we also have eyewear shades. Basically, I received the PPP loan. Um, it wasn't for much, but it was for enough for me to start the clothing business. And that's when I did that and started working with the models because I had a camera. So I would have models take photos in my clothing. And now we have contracts with them to where they started performing in a show. And I would teach them how to become models and I would help them take photos. I would teach them how to walk and also dance. So it's a theatrical fashion performance. It includes models, dancers, and actors. I teach them how to act as well, and I record everything. And soon the film will be released. Um, there's multiple episodes. I've had like a secret TV show for a couple of years now, it's, uh, running it with T. So, yeah. Uh, That's awesome, everything, man. Everything I've That's been awesome. doing. That's right, baby. Shine yeah, like keep it up, man. For sure, for sure. And where yeah, do your fans find you? Your clothing, you. your clothing brand was your website. Yeah, how, how do they follow you? You said, how is it going? No, how do they find you, your fans? A website for your clothing uh, and, and different stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, 4HGU.com, but I'm changing the domain and everything will be back up and running because I have to upload all the new models that I recently did a shoot with. We did a studio shoot. And they had on editorial clothes and streetwear clothes. So I have to add them to the web page. I don't want to just be in a quick hurry and just release everything all at once. I want to make sure everything is picture perfect so there's no mishaps. And yeah, I'm going to make sure everything looks nice. I need to add videos. But yeah, it's okay, going well. He's a good model. He's six something, you know. <laughs> got to look. He got to swag. Oh, man. <laughs> You're funny. Well. If you're yeah. hiring, give give me a call. <laughs> yeah. You look like you have on a hoodie. You no, know, just pick the hoodie up, grab the top. Yeah, right there. yeah, yeah. All right, just like so that. Once again, guys, you're listening to the Olympic Digest. Like, share, post, all of that stuff. We're with the man himself. Uh, my vision that I see for him is going to get at least top three at the World Championships in Eugene, where it all started. He may end up with a gold, but the worst I see is a bronze medal. To where that's where he started his international career, and it's gonna be part of this pinnacle uh, in his buildup. So expect him hey. to pull off a bronze medal at least. I said it first, DP. I said it first. There's no heats. There's no rounds. It came from me first. Wait, wait. We already got a bronze. At already that got a bronze at World Juniors. Right. 
now we can't get I know, that's why I said, no, 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 I'm saying at the world, the big boy stuff now. That's the junior. I, this is the big boy where it all started. So I expect minimum bronze because it's your favorite track. Gotcha. Well, first of Nike, all, we don't get, forget, we you're get, next door, Nike. <laughs> we getting yes. gold all day because we team USA. <laughs> no, 